Before all this started, did you and KRS One know each other at all? We didn't know each other at all, not a, in the least bit. Okay, so you drop the bridge, and then what exactly led KRS One, which I guess it was Boogie Down Productions at that point, to drop South Bronx? For the simple fact he always taking something that he don't know nothing about and talking about it. <laughs> he didn't know he didn't said, oh, hip hop started in a I never said I said, let me tell you a little story about where they come from. But I guess that he, that was his niche into the game. So you can't blame him for doing it. You know what I'm saying? But if he listened to it, you will hear me say, let me tell you a little story about where they come from. The bridge, the, the, the bridge where I told the story of who I watched doing this. You know what I'm saying? And in, in reality, there were a lot of other people doing music before the Bronx. Or at the same time as the Bronx. Brooklyn, you know, flowers in them. You know what I mean? They were doing stuff. And so by him saying South Bronx, I've heard that, the, that it actually started in the West Bronx. But that's not for me to be a scholar and talk about. It's none of my business. All I know is about what I was talking about in Queensbridge. So KRS drops South Bronx. What, what was your reaction when you first heard it? What was my reaction? Kill that noise. Kill, kill that noise. Now he drops another one. The bridge is over. Now, here I am. I want to get back at Chris. I want to get him. I want to get him. Molly didn't want to do that song. He didn't want to do the next disc record because he thought that it was going to take Chris to a new height if we went and did that record. So don't nobody think that I wasn't about to go at his head again. It was just that Molly Maul, my producer at that time, and see, back then, you went and did what your producer said. It's not like now. If my producer tell me, oh, I'm not going to do it, I'm going to sit down in my own joint. And I'm going to do what I got to do on my own and forget what you're talking about. But since Molly was the producer, I had to go by what Molly said. He didn't make the beat, so whatever came out after Br Bridge is Over didn't happen. Well, the Bridge is Over was, was a dope-ass song. Like, like it, you know, I'm going to keep it 100 with you because we both, you know, I'm not even OGs. mad at it. I mean, come on. It, it is what it is. Yeah. And I mean, I, I got to look at it like this. I got to look at it in, in its real reality that if he didn't make them stupid records, we wouldn't be where we are in history right now. You dig right. what I'm saying? We might have been two artists that just came and went. And there would be no bridge wars right now. There wouldn't be no Shan talking crap about Chris in 2016 because he talked too fucking much. You know what I'm saying? Well, when, when Kara's dropped the bridge is over, he didn't just talk about you. He talked about the whole Juice crew. I mean, you know, Roxanne Chante is only good for steady fucking. Marley Marl got it. Like, how did the Juice crew feel about The Bridge is Over as a whole? They left it up to Shan. I'm stepping back. That's because he, he was friends with Kane. You heard it in the interview. He was helping Kane carry furniture. So as that, I would have felt disrespected. Oh, you, you know what I'm saying? We mans, but you're going to talk about... You know, well, he didn't actually say Kane in the record. He really talked about me, Molly, Magic, the original Juice Crew folks. Yeah. Because when he bring that record up to Magic, and you know Magic, do you know Magic? No. Well, Magic will curse anybody out. I don't care if you was gangster of all gangster. You know what I'm saying? Magic was crazy like that. So Chris bring it up to, to, uh, to HBI for Magic to play. And Magic basically told him this is garbage and threw it at him. You know what I'm saying? Get out of here with that garbage. You know? So he's like, that's... Wait, wait. wait. So, so KRS-One brings a track where he's dissing Mr. Magic? No. And wants Mr. He, whatever his first thing was. Whatever his first song was. Okay, what, so this is before South Bronx and everything? Right, this is before okay. South Bronx. Whatever his first song that he was trying to put out, he bring it up to the station for Magic to play. And Magic basically threw him out of there. Like, yo, get out of here. So in order for him to get back at Magic and whatever, he turned it on the rappers because Magic wasn't an artist. So well, who better than to turn it on than Shan or hear the bridge and just make a diss record? You know what I'm saying? You're not even from the Bronx, so why are you repping that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Kara's drops the bridges over, and then 
Marley tells you not to do a, a response record. Not to do a response record. That was like maybe the greatest thing. Maybe it was the worst thing. I just can't, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to have to live with that stigma for the rest of my life. That's what really, that's, that's the thing when y'all see me flaring up about this whole KRS-One thing, that's the thing that's really in my chest. Like, y'all don't even know the true history. I was ready to do this other record, but who stopped me? Molly. Do you think he's ever going to say, well, I, didn't t I told Shan not to do it? He ain't never going to say that. He's never going to say that. You know what I'm well, saying? Uh, Marley at one point, I guess, said that KRS and Scott LaRock wanted to be part of the Juice Crew. They wanted to be. I don't even know. Um, I, all I know is that Molly didn't even want to do the Sprite commercial with Chris. That's how much he didn't like them. That's why on the Sprite commercial, you see Red Alert in his corner. You see Mr. Magic in my corner. Molly wanted nothing to do with them at all. But in the end of the day, Molly produced every artist that I dissed or had diss records with. You know what I'm saying? So to me, that's like you're wishy-washy in certain situations. Not trying to get on Molly, but do what you got to do. But, you know, if you my crew, you my man and all that stuff, I'm not going to do certain things. You know what I'm saying? Somebody just stuck me up on the corner. You hanging out with them for real? I mean, after all this happened, how did you feel when KRS and, and Marley did an album together? I didn't really care. Looked the same to me, like always. Molly gonna do what he do. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna be calling him out or saying nothing bad about him. You know what I'm saying? Love him to death. But he do what he do. And that's how Molly does. So it's expected of him. He did, he did the Rock the Bells before that. You know what I'm saying? The Chris album came way after. So it was no surprise that he would do a rival, you know what I'm saying? After after I stopped letting him produce me and stuff like that, Molly wouldn't help me out in no shape or form. I would send him songs that I got and say, yo, could you play this? And he wouldn't do me any kind of favors. You know what I'm saying? So I have a, I have a thing about him in my head, in my mind, and in my heart. You know what I'm saying? I was supposed to be your man, and even if I was your fam, you didn't even look out. But that's how Molly does. You know what I'm saying? That's how he is. So I guess KRS at one point said that there was supposed to be a face-to-face -face battle with both of y'all. There was. There was. It was. It, know what we did? We did like we always did. We did the uh, what you call that? The Paramount Theater. But it was never a thing where. All right, he got his check, I got my check. It wasn't a thing where if we was going to do that battle, we splitting the door or something, because that's going to be a big draw. So if y'all ain't doing that, you ain't getting that. So whenever we did our shows, there was never no discussion with me and Chris about, yo, y'all going to battle, because if it came down to that, I'm pretty sure me and Chris would have looked at each other and said, this is going to be a big draw. It's going to be a big opening gate. So we ain't taking that little bullcrap money that they about to give us. Y'all going to give us the door on this and all that. We cutting in all the proceeds. So with that being said, there was never a real battle schedule. But we did mad shows together. You get your money, I get my money, and we're going to go in the back and talk crap like we always do. You know what I'm saying? It was for stage. Period. Those, those shows we did were for stage. In the end of the day, we'd go in the back and slap each other five. What's up? You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm going to get you tonight. Oh, I'm going to get you tonight. <laughs> there was never no real beefing about it. And we was making money, so it really was never... It didn't come till years later that he started talking all that crap that he talked. Before that, it was we boys, we boys, we boys. And then years later, now you want to start running off at your mouth about how you took Shan out when you don't even know the real scenario behind why I didn't dish you on another record. So if, if a promoter came in and said, okay, look, we want to do a KRS-One MC Shan live battle. You know, like the way, you know, how you had like Keith Murray and Fredro Starr happen recently and so forth. Would you do it? At this point in time, after yeah. all that shit that he just talked and talking all that shit, I wouldn't let that nigga get a fucking dime off of me. Like he's saying, I want to get a dime off you. That's how much I want that money. Uh, and I ain't worried about it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't worried about it. You want to see it. Oh, my, I, I made more money than your whole career span. 
All the 20 albums, all that, and you were talking about, oh, she ain't need money. I don't need nothing. I still get snow royalties. And I'm talking about that last bullshit that he did. You know what I'm saying? Which those two diss records are the greatest shit on your whole fucking album. That now here it is. Now I heard it. 